world is the most beautiful, messed up place. It is like stained glass windows built out of bombs. And you learn quickly not to step in the wrong place because bang, you never know when something's going to blow. And me, well, I'm a mess of ideas and brown hair and dreams and bruises. And I have this fantastical dream that someday the world will be stained glass windows made out of kisses and lollipops. And that someday I won't be the only one dreaming or the only one dancing. And my neighbors will be soulmates and my dreams will be plans. But what if I'm not the only one dreaming? Maybe I just feel that way. Maybe you will all keep your dreams inside and let them bubble and brew. Maybe you really do have things to say and just don't know how to say them. That's the funny thing about dreams. You almost never do. But I know you're thinking about something. All those irreplaceable moments of silence where I saw your eyes closed. You had to have been dreaming. Everyone dreams. The thing is, we need to dream together. So what if everyone did big things instead of pursuing small realities? If we all wanted it bad enough and giving up didn't mean you were done forever. Watching someone give up is like being suffocated of serenity. It is watching someone drown who can't cry for help. And it's not because they're not swimming. It's because they do not know how. And what if we took all the stained glass windows and lined them up facing east so that the sun shone through them every morning and every evening and made the air swirl with colors? Because colors paint our world with the utmost care and detail and dust our fears with the metallic beauty of faith. And what if life was fair? If no one could use cheat cards, such as nationality, gender, or class, what if instead of putting life on a teeter-totter, where one end is always up and the other end is always down, we put life on a rock climbing wall? Because then there is nowhere you can go but up. And if you look up often enough, you begin to know the stars, and stars shine everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're in Idaho or Ireland, the stars will always be the same. They're constant. And what if instead of phone numbers, we drew flowers on the backs of kids' hands, gave them wings, and told them, go fly? Kids need to investigate the world, to understand how things work, to flood their minds with creativity. They are big thinkers and big doers. And they don't say no to a challenge. And neither should we. We should be confident, hopeful, and fearless, but we should never be afraid to say, I don't know. Everyone needs help sometimes. And what if instead of calling them stained glass windows, we called them masterpiece glass windows because it took time to build them. It wasn't just a spilled coffee mug. It was hours of work and energy painstaking patience and nimble fingers. It was time away from family and hearts away from home. It wasn't just an accident. Nothing is ever just an accident. And what if teenage girls felt okay in their own bodies and didn't starve themselves until all that's left is hip bones and hate? If being healthy trumped being skinny, that for all the girls who skipped dinner, or find themselves over a toilet, ridding themselves of confidence and nutrients that we might be kind enough to braid back their hair and tell them we love them. Explain to them that no one is perfect, but that everyone is special. What if glass didn't break so easily and you could put it back together? If one slam door didn't mean everything shattered? If forgiveness could be used as glue and hope would help you pick up the pieces. What if men and boys weren't told to hide their emotions? If crying didn't mean they were a victim and vulnerability wasn't an imperfection, 
that the pressure wasn't on them to always be bigger and stronger and tougher, and that their tears could freely fall, and that when they did, we would catch them. Because just like we should love babies and teenage girls and old people and our mothers and fathers, we should also love our boys and men. They need it just as much as everyone else, if not more. And what if windows never drooped? That over time, things didn't look distorted, but if anything, more clear. That the outside image stayed the same as months split into years, and you could always count on something besides the stars to look the same. What if I could hold your hand and tell you how I really feel? If honesty didn't feel like betrayal, then truth wasn't a guilt. That no one ever had to worry about whether their secret was safe because best friends were really friends and safe really meant safe. I wonder what would happen if there wasn't so much hate, if everyone wore rain boots, <laughs> if we bedazzled life with hope, if the bombs stopped erupting, and not realizing your potential was the worst crime you could commit. What if windows were just for keeping out wind, and hands were just for holding? What if we gave people a voice as often as we give them criticism? Maybe then, instead of being the cracked, dissonant parts of our past, stained glass windows could be the flourishing, flavorful parts of our present. And we could all gather in a church, a temple, a synagogue, a mosque, a studio, some place we all call peaceful, to step back and realize that we have hands that were made to hold other hands, our fingers linked together no matter how many times you try, and that yesterday always stays yesterday, but tomorrows keep coming like the waves of a waterfall that crash upon your shoulders, and of course, Ponchos aren't going to hold up the madness. But waterfalls are the only thing that can cut through cliffs. And stained glass windows are the only thing that can turn the air into colors. <laughs>